Hi, my name's Sam Matthews. I'm a geophysicist with the Geological Survey of New South Wales. I'll be talking about enhancing statewide geophysics with high resolution company data. So I'll start off with the why, I'll move on into the how, and I'll, find, I'll finish off with what's available. So why? Well, the upgraded merge is a project that we performed in New South Wales as part of the geological survey. We upgraded our 2014 magnetic merge for a number of reasons. <clears throat> to start with, the new version has drastically improved documentation. It's got an improved merge procedure. It incorporates high resolution company surveys, which is a big point, and I'll get to that more in coming slides. It also incorporates some recent government surveys that weren't performed at the time of the 2014 merge. It addresses some known artifacts, and it very much improves the grid cell size from a former 50 meters to 25 meters, which is four times increase in resolution. So how did we go about it? Well, to start with, there was an extensive QAQC process performed over all of the company geophysics ever required in New South Wales. There's about 850 airborne surveys dating back to the 1950s, and some of the data within it was quite poor, to put it nicely. <clears throat> When you go through the legacy data, there are all sorts of different legacy formats, and it was a little bit of a fun ordeal to sort all of that out. So we we're left with the choice. How do you decide which of these surveys go into the merge? Do you want them to just be eyeballed by an operator who qualitatively just says, oh, that one looks good? No, obviously. So instead, an algorithm was created to quantitatively assess the quality of each survey. And the results of this algorithm narrowed it down to about 300 company surveys, roughly 150 of which, of which <clears throat> were open file at the time, and another roughly 150 confidential. The confidentiality for most of these actually expires on the 1st of June 2021, which is when the Sunset Clause of the Mining Act in New South Wales comes into effect. So they'll be able to be added to a future iteration of the merge, quite shortly actually. So let's take a look at the algorithm. Here's a little subset of the surveys up top. So you can see the 2012 Glenelg survey, the 1995 Brewarren survey, and the 1991 Dubbo survey. You can see all of their metadata here. So the spacings, the clearance, the area, sampling rate, their bearing relative to the strike, the year they were performed, and then their final algorithm score. <clears throat> you can see the top one, Glenelg. It's got a perfect score of 500, and it's got that by having a station spacing of 100 metres, a clearance of 40 metres, an area of over 1,000 square k's, a sampling rate of 20 hertz, a bearing of 90 degrees relative to the strike in the area, and it was done in 2012, so it's quite recent. Now the Brewarrina one, with a score of 100, that's roughly the score the government surveys got on average, which is fitting because it's a government survey. It's a reasonable score, and it's why it was used, therefore, as a baseline for surveys to be included within the merge. Lastly, there's Dubbo. You can see its metadata specs are a fair bit worse, and that's why it scores so poorly. So here's a quick look at the metadata table, uh, sorry, the lookup table to, that went into the algorithm. And this may or may not really interest someone. It may just be a bunch of numbers, but it's there anyway for anyone uh, that wants to look into it. So you can see all of the weightings and the values that went into the algorithm in order to generate the final score at the end. And finally, we've got this plot down here. <clears throat> and this shows every airborne geophysical survey performed in New South Wales, well, up until the point where the data was captured at least. The blue are company and the red are government. So you can see the government surveys in here. They got a few really high scoring ones, but for the most part, this little line here, the score of 100, that's where they plateau. That's where we wouldn't want to introduce any company surveys that have a lower score than that because it would be diminishing the merge. So therefore, score of 100, if we track it across, trace it down, that leaves us with the roughly 300 surveys that I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> that Those are the surveys that are allowed into the merge. So here's a little shapefile look at the before and after. So 2014 on the left and 2020 on the right. You can see it's coloured by line spacing and on the left it's very much a regional government plot with 200 to 400 metre line spacing except for the unfortunate area on the east coast where we're missing data. Well not missing data, we just haven't been able to complete surveys in those regions. So we've got to fill in the gaps with the old BMR legacy surveys. 
but there's really not much company stuff in the 2014 merge. There's a little bit in around Cobar filling in here and there, but even so, a lot, a lot of that is quite old and quite poorly spaced. <clears throat> but 2020, on the other hand, there's a large wealth of company surveys that have been added in, and not only that, but they're very high resolution, 100 meters or less line spacing. And your first takeaway from this might be, you might look at it and think, well, there's not much area being covered there. It's not really going to make a difference, but it actually does make a lot of difference. There's been a touch under 10% of the state that's been covered by company data now. And these areas with the really high resolution surveys are performed in highly prospective regions. And it's really useful to be able to zoom into them and uh, use the much lower grid cell size mentioned earlier to see far higher resolution once you zoom down into it. So what's available then? <clears throat> what are the products that we made? So the updated products, this is our gorgeous new TMI RTP. That's total magnetic intensity reduced to the pole. And at this resolution on a single slide without zooming in, it's just a pretty picture. But if you were to zoom right in on it, the level of detail is astounding right down to prospect scale. So our RTP 1VD, this is the first vertical derivative. This was performed and this is excellent at picking up sort of shallow features in the magnetics and it's used by geologists and explorers everywhere. Moving on there's the TMI RTP tilt, so the tilt angle filter. This is something that's great at sort of flattening the signal so that you're not necessarily seeing if a response is shallow or deep but you are just seeing excellent boundaries for anomalies. And that's great to use as well for a composite where, like this where you overlay the TMI RTP colour scheme on top of the RTP tilt with a transparency and it gives you an excellent look at what's a high magnetic value, what's a low magnetic value, and you can see the boundaries are also really crisp and clear. And these are just some of the ones I've thought to showcase. We've also got 2VD, the regular TMI without the RTP, and there's even some custom ones that we have in our archives. So where can you get it? It's free to download, can be found on our web, web portal MinView. And that's easy enough to find if you just Google MinView, it'll be the first thing to show up. So once you're into MinView, you just open the layer pane, and from there you select the geophysical imagery folder, the magnetics folder, and then you can turn on whichever image that you like. So I've got just selected the TMI RTP, and that shows up in the sidebar over here. So that's the way to view it spatially, but if you actually want to download it and have your own copy, you can get that and all the imagery by coming up here in the corner and selecting tools, clicking data download, and when you do, a little pop-up box will appear like so. You can select geophysical imagery, and then you can fill out the little form. So I've selected here a GeoTIFF in GDA 2020 coordinate system off the TMI RTP. You can pick and choose from the drop-down menus. You can select all of New South Wales, or if you prefer, you can zoom right in and clip it to your current view. So that's just if you've got an area of interest and you don't really care about the giant data set for the whole state. You type in your email address and get it sent to you. So that's the imagery. The grids are also available in here. They've got their own little selection and you just do the same thing with the grids. So if you're interested in them, you download the data and you can image them yourselves. And with that, I think I'll leave it there. So if you have any further questions or you want to know anything about it, you can reach me. My email address is there. And thank you for listening.